A lot of my students lately have been starting to solve systems of linear equations using elimination and have been having a little trouble with it. So I wanted to just make a quick video on how we do that. Basically, in a nutshell, what you want to do is you're going to be given two equations and you want to write them so that the variables of both equations are right above each other. Because what we're going to be doing is we're going to be adding these vertically. And the whole point of elimination is that we want to have to we want to do something to one or maybe both. Sometimes we'll have to do both of the equations so that one of the variables cancels out or eliminates. Now, the first thing that I want you to do once you've gotten your equation all lined up, variables on top of variables and the constants on the other side, what I want you to do is look and see do one of the variables already cancel out. So if you look 4x and 3x, that would just give us 7x that doesn't cancel out. But y minus y that cancels right out. So right off the bat, we didn't even have to do anything. And what you do now is you just add vertically like normal. So 7x equals, what is this, <laughs> 70. And we would end up with x equals 10. Now be careful, sometimes you know when we're coming from just one variable equations, we think, oh, okay, we're done. You have to take that value and plug it back into either one of these equations. Let me lock this in place so I don't erase it. And uh, I'll pick uh, this one down here. If I plug in x equals 10, what I get is three times 10 minus y equals, wow, I can't write 22. <laughs> and uh, we would end up with 30 minus y equals 22. I'm just gonna bring the 22 to the other side. We would end up with eight and then plus y to the other side, y equals eight. And if you look, that's how we solve this. And if you were to use the other equation, it would work, give us the same exact thing. That we would have four times 10, 40. We could subtract 40 and we still end up with y equals a. So it doesn't matter once you get this first equation, excuse me, variable, <laughs> you can go back and pick either one of your equations that you started with to find the value of your second variable. Whew, that seemed like a lot. I promise it's not that bad once you get the hang of it. But basically what you wanna do is make sure all the variables are lined up and then see what you have to do so that one of the variables cancels out. So let's go to an example where that's not going to be the case, where it doesn't automatically say, oh, they cancel out. We're gonna to have to actually do something to make that happen. Now, looking at the second equation, basically we, we wanna do the exact same thing. If you look, none of the variables cancel themselves out automatically, but you can cancel out either of the variables. So you could pick these two and, and you know, do some work and uh, cancel the X's out, or you could do some work and cancel the Y's out. It's up to you. What I would recommend is picking the variable that would be the easiest so that we don't have to do as much work. And it looks to me like if I can turn this 4Y into an 8Y, a positive 8Y, then 8Y minus 8Y, that cancels out, eliminates, right? And then we'd be good to go from there. All I have to do for that is just double this, multiply that by two, but I can't just multiply 4Y by two, I have to multiply the whole thing. That's kind of like one of the big ideas behind the elimination method is you can't just multiply one term, the entire equation has to be multiplied. So what we're gonna do is we always, you want if you do something to one equation, you wanna rewrite it just so you know what you're working with. And it looks like, our new top equation, that's a four, would be four X plus eight Y equals 32. And then the bottom equation, we haven't even messed with that. That's the same exact thing. Minus eight Y equals negative 18. And now because these cancel each other out, we can just go ahead I, I like to write them. You could write a zero down here if you want. I just cross them out just so we're done with that. Four um, X plus three X, ironically, we get another seven X. I was, I didn't mean for that to happen, but it happened. <laughs> so, and then 32 minus 18, we get 14. And then from here, um, just dividing by seven, we get X equals two. And then again, coming back, you can pick either one of your original uh, equations or the second, you could pick this one over here. But I usually start with the original ones because they're easier. And what you wanna do is take that variable, be careful, we're not done yet, we're just about there. We need to find out what the other variable is equal to. And I would pick the easiest one. You can kind of sometimes tell what the easier one looks like. Um, if I plug X equals two into the top equation, I get two times two plus four Y equals 16. That's just four over here. So I'd subtract four and I end up with four Y equals 16. Nope, excuse me, I subtract four, four Y equals 12 and we get Y equals three. And again, if you had plugged it into here, X would have been two still, this would have been a six, negative 18 minus six, that's negative 24. Negative 24 divided by negative eight is still a positive three. Okay, so you start to see the pattern here. We just need to figure out what do we need to do to one of the equations or sometimes both. If we would have wanted to get rid of the X's, we would have had to multiply top and bottom. Um, the top we would have multiplied by three, 
the bottom we could have multiplied by a negative two, then we could would have got you know six and negative six. But again, pick the easier route. <laughs> you, know, you don't get points for doing more work. But uh, I want you to know there's usually not just one way to do these. Okay. Um, and so that was it for that one. Let's check one where it's not all lined up. We have to do a little bit work, a little bit of work to get it all lined up. Now for this one, remember what I told you in the very beginning that we want to get all the variables stacked on top of each other. Now they, they will do this. They'll, they'll write them, you know, completely in, in completely opposite directions, but it's up to you to get them in the same order. Uh, it doesn't matter which way you do it as long as they, the variables are right on top of each other. So I'm just going to add X to both sides for this top equation and we'll end up with X plus four Y equals nine. And then the bottom equation we haven't even messed with equals 16. Now, this one, again, um, you could get the y's to be the same number, but we'd have to multiply, you know, this by nine and this by four and, you know, just a lot of work. This one, I want you to think of it, what could I do so that this is the equal but opposite value of 5x, aka negative 5x. <laughs> so if you think about it, all I would have to do is multiply the top equation by negative five, because this would become a negative 5x plus 5x, those would cancel each other out and then we could solve for y. So let's go ahead and rewrite that. So we would end up with negative 5x minus 20y minus 45 equals minus 45. And then down here we end up, we didn't even mess with that. So that's still 5x minus 9y equals 16. So again, boom, those cancel out. That's the whole process of elimination. If you do something and one of the variables doesn't eliminate or disappear to zero, then something's up and we have to go back and double check. But if we do this, it looks like negative 29y equals, oh, what is negative 45? Negative 29, I'm kind of on the edge here, but if you look, negative, that's a nine, I promise. Negative 29y equals negative 29. If we divide both sides by negative 29, we end up with y is equal to one. So let's go back and, and I probably should have given you guys one where if you get a fraction, you're not always going to get whole numbers, you know, algebra, algebra two, they're going to expect you to be comfortable working with fractions. I just wanted to get you the idea of, you know, how these work, but make sure you're comfortable with fractions because they will pop up. Um, so we come back to the originals. I, I just like to use the original equation. You could use the new one if you wanted, but let's plug Y equals one into the easiest one we can find that looks like this one. So we'd end up with X plus four times one equals nine, that's a nine, <laughs> I can't write. Uh, we subtract four from both sides and we end up with X equals five. So for that one, again, we end up with Y equals one, X equals five, that would be our solution to the system of equations. So that's what we've been doing with these ones. You end up with these system of equations and when they tell you to solve by elimination, you wanna make sure your variables on stock are, I can't even talk, your variables are stacked on top of each other and then you just need to figure out what do I need to do to one or both of the equations so that when I add them, uh, the variables cancel out. And it's just so happened the easiest way for this last one was multiply the top by negative five, the X is canceled out. And now we just have an equation with one variable. We've been solving those since pre-algebra. So we're all good to go and then work backwards to find your second uh, value, your second variables value. And that's pretty much it for elimination. Again, they can throw some fractions in there. You'll probably have some word problems. That's usually what you do next. I'll try and put one up uh, a video where we actually go into some word problems and uh, see how we apply these. But hopefully this video helped and uh, we'll see you in the next one.